Hi, Brad. So, congrats on having a nice home game for you. I know you have to travel a lot of time for these things, but maybe talk about your excitement level and how good it feels to be here at home getting a fight. Uh, you know, I'm always pushing to get these fights right here in Las Vegas. Um, this is where I reside now, and you guys all know this is the closest that we can get to UFC Hawaii. Um, people call it the Ninth Island because there's so much uh, local people here, local influence. So uh, it's it's huge for me to be able to fight in Vegas, but to get to headline a card, you know, um, in one of the biggest weeks in our sport, you know, International Fight Week, and uh, it's pretty cool, you know. It's like it comes back to I'm getting to headline on a card, a tough finale, you know. It's, kind of how I made my start here in the UFC, so that's pretty cool. How, how is this injury, man? Uh, there was, a, I mean, I guess Dan said a few weeks ago that Brad Tavares is out of the fight, but you're sitting here, so obviously you're, you're still in the fight. Well, what's, what's going on? Yeah, you know, it was just a lot of miscommunication and misinformation um, between the, the UFC's medical staff uh, and then what they communicated to Dana. And Dana probably, like, just being, I don't know, under the stress of potentially losing his main event for another card, you know, kind of just jumped the gun a little bit. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was actually an old existing injury that I had prior and they imaged it. I don't know if you guys are familiar, if you take a x-ray of a, and you see a broken bone, it, it'll, no matter what, when you x-ray that again, it will always come up. And these people, the, um, I don't even know what they're called, the technicians, the whatever, the MRI technicians, they're just gonna write on a piece of paper what exactly they see. Like, okay, this is, their, you know, they're just basically right. writing a report. It's like if I told you, look in this box and just tell me all the contents, you know, you're just gonna write, oh, this is what I see, this is what I see, this is what I see. Anyway, so that's what they did, put on a piece of paper, that was sent over to the UFC medical staff. They took that, oh, it's fractured, broken, whatever, took it to Dana, and then they just jumped the gun on that uh, without ever speaking to me personally, without ever speaking to, um, the Performance Institute PT, Heather Linden, who you know who I've been working with the whole time. Um, but as far as it goes, I never once said I wasn't gonna fight. I never once said I wasn't able to fight. I never once said that I was even doubting being able to fight. In fact, I spoke to Mick Maynard that morning before all of the craziness happened when he first got the, uh, uh, the copy or the report, I guess. He reached out to me and was like, hey man, how you doing? How you feeling? And I was like, I was like, hey, don't worry about it. You know, it's not, I'm not sure what exactly was said to you, but it's something that is, I'm 100% fighting unless, you know, barring something from now to then happens. But uh, anyway, it was, it was a hectic day, I guess, at first. Everybody was hitting me up. Um, a lot of support though, a lot of people, you know, saying they're, they're sorry and apologizing that, uh, you know, they felt bad that I was losing out on this opportunity, but uh, yeah, so that's all behind me now, and I was just like, whatever, it is what it is, and you know, July 6th, I'll be able to go out there and show that nothing is bothering me. Do you feel like you're 100%, like you're, you're, you're good to go? Yeah, um, so somebody had asked me there, like, does any fighter ever feel, um, I feel 100% ready to go. But uh, I don't think any fighter goes into any fight without right. any type of hiccup in camp, you know. I, in every camp, when I start the camp, I always expect to face some type of adversity as far as like injuries, maybe sickness. I mean, this past camp, I even uh, got like a minor uh, food poisoning. So, you know, like I went through it, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, when I look back at it, like camp is almost done here. And uh, it was a great camp. You know, I got a lot of good work in. Um, I feel like I made a lot of improvements again in this camp. And uh, I'll be able to go out there, you know, on July 6th and show that. A lot of people have uh, raved about the PI and about Heather in particular. Um, do you think without this facility here and without her, maybe you could, you would not be able to make the fight? Nah, I would fight. No matter, <laughs> yeah, I would make the fight. Um, but uh, no, yeah, it, this, this, being um, made, and uh, we've had it for going on a year now, or actually, yeah, it's been a year now. Um, it's, it's been huge, you know, like it really feels like this is a step towards, you know, they always talk about they want to get the UFC to the mainstream as far as like being able to compete with like NBA, NFL, and you know, the major sports. And uh, this is definitely a step in that direction. Um, they really take care of us here. 
we have strength and conditioning, um, we have physical therapy, we have all this recovery stuff that we can use, not to mention they feed us, and the best part about it, it's all free, so <laughs> gotta love that. <laughs> Why did you think of the UFC uh, putting Thiago Marreta as a standby in case you could not compete? Um, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's, I look at it like this, you know, this, at the end of the day, this is a business. And again, without, I mean, if maybe if Dana would have spoken to me first, he would have been able to, you know, know that, okay, he doesn't have to go that far. But even if he spoke to me and just the fact that, oh, maybe there is an injury, them finding a substitute or replacement, I understand this business. If, if I do fall out, hey, they have somebody right in there to jump in. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, he, I, I don't blame Dana. Um, he took the advice of his medical, whoever it was that spoke to him, and that told him that I had this injury and wouldn't be able to fight. And you know, like why would he question them? You know, that's what he pays him for. So it is what it is. How do you think Israel as well? Like, um, do you what do you think of all this hype on him? Exactly, it's just hype, you know. Um, I don't think that uh, he's, regardless of what he says, I don't think he's fought. Well, I know he hasn't fought someone like me, um, and I know he thinks, or he says at least, that he thinks that uh, his last guy was tougher than me. But I mean, he's delusional or crazy. I don't know. What's in this really for you to gain? I mean, he seems to have everything to gain by getting a win of this. He's not ranked, you're the higher ranked guy. I mean, it seems to you that you have everything to lose in taking this fight. Uh, yeah, you know, <clears throat> when they first offered me the fight, it wasn't the fight that I really wanted. I really was eyeing that Bisping fight. Um, and I thought that with where I was right now, with where Bisping was, um, I thought that, you know, that I deserved that fight. And uh, that's the fight I really wanted. And it's been a fight I wanted for years, but uh, you know what? Bisping is retiring, and you know, props to him. He's he's had a great career. Um, I'm happy for the man. But uh, uh, after that, you know, this was the fight that was being offered to me, and uh, yeah, I don't think that Israel deserves to be you know in the spot that he's in. But for me, uh, I get to fight right here in Vegas. I get to fight in front of. Like, like we said, the closest thing we have to UFC Hawaii, so this is like a UFC Hawaii, you know, a bunch of other Hawaiians um, fighting this weekend. You got Rachel Osovich, I believe she's on the same card, if not the next day, and uh, Yancy Madaris, Max Holloway, and then parlay that right into the Dino White's Contender Series, you know, a bunch of Hawaiians on that card. So big weekend for Hawaii, big weekend for the Hawaiians as far as uh, the MMA goes. I know he's pretty high on his skills, but when you have to break him down on paper, where, where do you see his dangers and things that you have to kind of keep an eye out for? Um, Israel, yeah. So I definitely respect him, you know, as a fighter. Every fighter, he wouldn't have made it here if he wasn't talented, you know. Um, I actually see him pump me pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nah, nah. No, no poke at him, but uh, you guys know what I mean. Um, but no, he definitely he had a he had a very um, respectable uh, kickboxing career. Um, he did some things there, put together a good record, and you know he had some good fights. He's talented. Um, that being said, I still think I come out the better fighter. I, you know, um, I'm not. I respect the man, but there's nothing that I fear there. There's nothing that even upon taking the fight that I was really worried about. You know. Um, in any fighter, regardless of where they are, if you're fighting them, you know, it's a fight at the end of the day. Anything can happen. But uh, when I look at him, I know that this is somebody that I can beat, that I will beat, you know, and that I'm better than. So we'll see. July 6th. One last thing for me that you kind of made me think on. When you talked earlier about when you understand how the UFC possibly could have put in a replacement for you when you thought you were injured. Now we have a flip side of this sort of thing happened with like Paul Felder. He had his opponent since there was an injury or pull out, his opponent taken away from him and now he's lost without a fight. What are your thoughts on how that sort of last minute thing happens and fighters are losing their, their fights that they've been prepared for? I mean, what are your thoughts on is there a way to deal with that sort of thing? No, it's, it's the fight game. Um, you know, it's, uh, I don't know what statistically it is or whatever, but uh, if you spend time in an MMA gym with top level fighters and you see the work that goes in, well, I know for me and my team at, at least, you know, we put in work. Um, we're not going crazy, we're not trying to kill each other, but still, we're, we're grown men 
grinding, you know, like we're fighting. Um, and yeah, we might not be fighting each other every day, but we're, we're, we're going hard. So I, injuries are going to happen. It, it's, it's unfortunate um, and it sucks, but hey, maybe in a perfect world, we could get through it injury free and 100% uh, of the fights that are scheduled make it. But uh, you know, that's, that's, that's not realistic. Um, I don't know what really can be done because I would say every time that I've ever been injured, it's it's not something that it's not doing something that I shouldn't have been doing. You know, it's not like I'm out here like oh, okay, like I don't know, I hurt myself doing some backflip I shouldn't be doing or something. You know, it's some freak accident that happens in training. You know, maybe oh this guy took me down and landed on me the wrong way, or maybe I shot in on somebody and hit an elbow got a cut you know it's it's just it's unpredictable and it's never as far as i go it's never getting injured doing something that i shouldn't be doing or that i wouldn't normally do it's just a freak accident you know so i don't know how that can really be prevented um and i think it makes a lot of sense to have like a backup guy and i guess i guess that was one of my point instead of breaking one fight that's already existing i mean that's got to be bad if you're a fighter and you're expecting a fight and they pull your opponent away to fill another fight and then you're left without a fight. So for you, you'd rather they just always dealt outside of the current fight, not break up fights to make a fight. Um, yeah, you know, if it, for, I mean, it's just what side of the coin you're on. So if you're that guy that's getting your opponent pulled and you don't have a fight, hell yeah, that sucks. I'll be pissed that like it leaves you without a fight. You know, you work this hard. I mean, I, at bare minimum, I hope you're at least getting compensated what you would have if you won the fight, you know? Because nobody goes into a fight thinking I'm gonna lose, expecting to lose. Every fighter, every fighter that I know, goes in there knowing, you know, believing in themselves that they're gonna win, expecting to win. Um, but then again, now if you're the other fighter that something happened and they're pulling a fight to make your fight happen, uh, I'd be stoked. I'm like, yeah, fighting. You know, I get to go out there and perform. I'm like, yeah, it sucks for the other guy, but the other guy is not me. So, I mean, it's just what what side you land on.